All right, so this is uh, a TGIT uh, uh, gauntlet. Uh, this is Retro Simber Rollmaster. Uh, uh, we had a party of four, but one of them double booked, so they're not here. Uh, I'll see if I can uh, slide in uh, somebody for session two and three. We'll see about that. Uh, but we've got uh, three uh, uh, players tonight for this. This is uh, working with old school uh, uh, Rollmaster. Uh, that I have simplified, and we are, are using this Slumbering Ursine Dunes, this locale, this point crawl. Um, Rollmaster is a complicated uh, old school system uh, that has been around through multiple editions, and uh, I've been through most of them. This version is very close to how we used to run it uh, in our house games, very simplified. A lot of the complex edges. Uh, smoothed off, which may seem crazy uh, when you're actually playing. You may go, well, if this is simple, what does the complex version look like? Uh, this is an OSR setting. Uh, it's originally built for the game Labyrinth Lord, so it's very much in that vein. It is a kind of a, uh, a dungeon crawl, hex crawl, point crawl. Uh, it's I don't usually run things quite as lethal as those are, but we'll see what happens. Uh, the players have some fate points that they can uh, uh, work with to defend themselves there. Uh, this is part of uh, the Gauntlet Hangouts, and uh, in the Gauntlet Hangouts, we have some safety tools that we use for play. Uh, in the course of this, I use the X card. It's a simple system. It's the easiest one to use for sort of one-shot, two-shot games, at least for me. What the X card is, is if we hit material that you find objectionable or problematic, you can either send a note in the chat or you can do this. Uh, my classic example of this is I've been playing with uh, my friend for years and we didn't have any kind of safety tools at the table. And after one of the sessions, he came up to me and said, you have got to stop throwing giant spiders at us. I I am terrified of spiders, you know, and this is a big guy, um, but it was really freaking him out. Uh, he did not care for it. Um, so if you hit stuff like that um, or tone or things, um, I, have, I have a number of times that I've used the X card when, it, when uh, people have done uh, dental descriptions in games. Um, but anyway, on the table, just for your reference. Uh, we're going to play through. We're going to take a break at the, the midpoint. Uh, if I get talking too fast, or if my Hoosier uh, Midwestern US accent gets in the way, you don't understand what I'm saying, please stop me and ask me to repeat myself. It will not offend me um, because sometimes I just get going. And uh, uh, when I watch it on the playback, I can't understand what I've said. So uh, uh, do not worry about that. Um, so the, the Dunes are a area of the world that is on the very edge of civilization. And uh, this is uh, uh, the world itself that we've got, the sort of continent that you're on is actually a, a, a number of large islands that are the size of England, some smaller, some larger, scattered around and about. Uh, the dunes, uh, and the area around them, Marlinko and uh, the, the the Cantons, the Kubelberg, and these areas that are around, there are in a uh, on the edges of a place called Arake. And but this is the this is the back of beyond. This is the the place where strange things happen. It is the edge between civilization and wilderness. And uh, so. That's where we're, we're going to start, it's where we're going to be exploring today throughout the, the course of this. The uh, dunes themselves, Marlinko and the dunes, are definitely influenced by uh, a Slavic uh, mythology around there, and I'm using it in the most general sense. Uh, that, so, you know, we've got uh, uh, things like uh, Rusalkas, I'm saying that wrong, but, uh, uh, and other. Uh, creatures of that and uh, uh, very much drawing from that uh, sort of feel. So we've got three characters 
I'm going to have you introduce your characters. Give me a name. Tell me how you're imagining the character. I may ask you about where you imagine your characters from, what they're like. We're going to do that. Uh, I'm going to walk through with each of you. Um, then we'll talk about how you three might have come together to uh, be an adventuring group. And uh, then we'll talk about how uh, uh, how you actually came to arrive here. Sherry, I'm going to put you on the spot because I know that you've been thinking about your character for a bit. So uh, why don't you tell us about who your character is and what they are like? Okay, my character's name is Beltru. Uh, she's a warrior monk. Um, she collects bells. Not that you ever hear them ringing unless she wants them to. That's her thing. And essentially, if you want her to work for you, you pay her in bells. And you make sure she never has to touch coin. Um, coin that is to pay for her is to be turned into bells. And that's just how she does business. Um, she's a little odd, um, but she never seems to be exactly unfriendly. She's whenever she's around people, she's typically popular with them, um, and she's easy to please, and she's incredibly willing to help people out, provided they give her some more bells. And do you imagine that she that the the sort of martial physical hand to hand training is something from your village, or did you train at a monastery, or were you taught in the woods? What, how are you imagining that? Um, I imagine it more that it is, it is one of, one of the gaieses of her god and gods, god, I don't know which, um, and essentially so, um, her t martial training and all of that stuff is by the grace of that god, and that's why, she, while she works at it and trains at it, it's like prayer for her, it's not martial training per se. And besides the bells, what does she look like? Um, she, okay, so the one thing is, is she always dresses pretty plainly. Um, she has loose pants. She wraps her feet in cloth. Um, she doesn't seem to be bothered by um, weather too much. She wears gloves. She has a simple uh, sh shirt on um, and a necklace with bells that don't ring unless she wants them to. And, of course, an anklet with bells that don't uh ring unless she wants them to and she has them tied into her hair um and they don't ring unless she wants them to uh so it's sort of like that um but she, one thing that she does have is she has a leather a big square piece of leather um that she wears as her skirt or her cloak or her you know uses it as her her sleeping uh, cloth. I mean, that's okay. it's like sort of all purpose, just piece of fleece lined leather that she carries with her and wears. Sounds good. I like that. All right. Uh, uh, Eugene, why don't you tell us about your gnome rogue? All right. So I started with an image I found and liked. So uh, I added it to the Roll 20 page. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, it's a, uh, her name is Elenica and she is, has a background, the, the world you described, I was thinking about it, I just kind of came up with this while you were describing it. So I think she has a, a, a background as a sailor, a swashbuckler, in fact. So I will say that she uh, was born and raised on the sea. Her family, uh, has been merchants, uh, tra tra traveling the seas between these islands for generations, but there's... You know, there's pirates out there, and so part of her upbringing was learning how to defend the ship from possible raiding, uh, and she got pretty good at it. Uh, uh, but there was, let's say, a uh, they there was uh, some sort of disaster. Let's say the family the family business went under when they were swindled uh, by uh, an you know deceptive uh, uh, dealer and so she they've had to sell their ship and they uh, you know and so she's out adventuring hoping to raise money so that the family can buy the ship back 
Uh, she has a kind of swashbuckling nature, uh, likes to get herself into trouble uh, and get out of it in the most uh, exciting and ridiculous way possible. Uh, she's uh, good with a blade and a word. <laughs> and uh, let's say she's, uh, you know, uh, plays a bit fast and loose with uh, the morals as well, I think. Okay. And uh, uh, so she uses a, a, a one-handed uh, crushing weapon. Typically, that's going to be a mace is uh, the, the typical thing for that. Okay, is that what she's got? Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Okay, so that'll work. She can have okay. a mace or, I suppose, a flail or something. Mace, flail, truncheon uh, of some kind, some kind of a blunt uh, object. All right. Uh, sure. That'll work. So she has a mace. Okay. Excellent. And uh, then, uh, Philip, uh, why don't you tell us about your sorcerer? Sure. So uh, his name is Kreva. And I was thinking about sort of a mercenary sorcerer, kind of a pragmatic type that uh, when he found out that he has some sorcerer talent, he decided to complete just enough of the arcane, uh, I know there are schools of some apprenticeship to be useful and then try to make as much coin of this as possible. Um, that's a little boring. So what I would like to add as a twist is I would like to follow one of the other characters. And this is um, in a, um, a, at some point, for some reason, he acquired this kind of Wookiee dead where he has to follow the other character because they uh, save them or, I don't know, um, somehow, you know, helped him um, in his previous adventures. And now Kreva has to follow the other person and help them with, with their stuff. I was thinking that, for example, instead of, you know, trying to collect as much coin as possible, now he has to follow uh, Bell, if, uh, uh, true, and, you know, collect uh, bells, which can be also this, this gash like the, uh, uh, that uh, Bell has, um, which he finds obviously ridiculous, but he cannot do anything. He has to follow the, the word that he has given. I like that. How are you? Are you cool with that? I am cool with that, and I think it, it explains why we have to have Elenica with us because she's the only one that can touch the coin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, so how? Uh, so it's is it Creva? Yes. Okay, uh, so what what do you imagine uh, Kareva looks like? I think while I'm wearing robes, those are probably tied in a way that are very comfortable and practical. So instead of something that you know flows really probably tightly uh, attached to the body, maybe with some robes. So it kind of looks like pants in this way. Um, and probably try to not look uh, as a sorcerer at all. But because I am also wearing a sword, I'm trying to... Um, the character tries to look um, sort of disguise themselves as somebody else due to their practical nature. They don't want to re uh, release the fact that um, uh, they have, um, well, they, they know magic. That sounds sounds good to me. Uh, 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 tall or sh short? Um, probably average looking. Probably okay. tries to, I would like to add, make everything that possible. He tries to make everything that possible to not be uh, very noticeable, I guess. Uh, so yeah, uh, trying not to stand out in a crowd. That makes sense yeah. to me. Um, so that establishes some things about your characters. We kind of know who they are. Uh, I want to talk about a couple of the mechanical things for this game. Um, when you look at your sheet, you'll see you have those skills. Um, and generally, what we're doing is if I call for a particular skill roll, you're going to be rolling percentile dice, D100. Uh, in roll mass, sorry, in roll 20, uh, uh, the syntax is forward slash roll D100. And I'll put that in the, the chat. I'll put that in the actual G chat here. So, so 
and that will uh, generate a uh, uh, a role for you. Um, unfortunately, I have to type out role because I don't know why. Um, and uh, you can write out D100 plus whatever bonus that you're using, or you can add it in after you roll. Um, I don't know why it's not uh, giving you the thing. Oh, are you? I'm sorry if I was confusing you. I, if you put a uh, a a, a, da, a ha, uh, oh, you're putting the syntax in there. Yeah, okay. the, just so that people know. I apologize. Okay. No, that's okay. Um, so basically, you're gonna be rolling. You're adding the number that's in the total that's closest to your skill. You'll also see that you have um, some. Uh, blank things that say secondary skill, one, two, three, four, and five. Those are specialty skills you can assign during play. Like, let's say you want to say, oh, my character knows first aid. Or my character knows uh, how to build a boat. Or my character knows how to cook. You can put that there. And then you'll take one of the numbers. You can have one skill at 50 two at 40 and two at plus 25. Um, so just wanted to tell you that that's, that's available uh, for play. Um, we'll get to the, the other sort of role systems when we actually get to, to action tests and so on. Um, but the other thing is, uh, uh, in the sort of welcome to role master sheet in the, the cheat sheet that I gave you, uh, you're going to get to pick a loadout for your character. You're going to pick some items that you start with. We're not going to detail everything out, but you get to pick. You get 10 points of stuff, 10 points of things you want to, to choose from. And for each point, you can have a day's worth of rations and water, uh, adventuring gear, which means that you can mark it later on and say, okay, well, I have rope or some specialty gear or whatever. Each one of those is a point worth of that. You can have a coin, which is like a chunk of money, which, of course, you don't want that, Sherry. Um, you can have uh, healing herbs of some kind, and you don't have to define that when you take it. You can just say, I have two uses worth of herbs. Uh, and or you can have a a trinket or an oddity or something weird that you have with you from your background. So Sherry, I'm going to start with you again because I'm going to keep putting you on the spot. Okay. Uh, so what is Beltru going to take with her ten points? And I know coin isn't among that. Yeah. What was the first one before coin? Uh, there's rations, rations, adventuring gear. Herbs, trinket. All right. So um, I'm going to put two in each of those, and except for herbs, I'll have four of. Okay. Two rations, two gear, four herbs, two trinkets. Okay. And Alenica, how do you want to build that? Let's go with, uh, so is adventuring gear something that I only need one of, or is it more like uh, uses in Dungeon World? It's it's like uses in Dungeon World. Okay. So then I guess I'll do, uh, plus, uh, two, two, let's do two rations, uh, three adventuring gear, three coins, and two herbs. Or no, let's have just one herb. She's living dangerously and a trinket. Okay. All right. Two, three, three, one, one. Yes. All right. And uh, Kreva, what about you? Um, so trinkets are not, you know, in my pragmatic nature, and I cannot have coin. So it will be only food, uh, herbs, and... Uh, mm, I guess four free free for food rations, free adventure gears, and free uh, herbs. Okay. Herbs. 
Would you like us to record these on our sheet as well? Or I have, you can record it for yourselves. I've also made a note here just to be on safe side. They're all good. You have four fate points. That's all you're going to get. That's all you have um, for all three sessions. Uh, you can use those to re-roll a roll that you have made or to re-roll a roll that I have made. Um, and uh, you can do that after the, the the roll. Like if I say, oh, look, I just rolled like a really high number to kill you. You might say, I, I want you to re-roll that. So that is that is how that works. So you three had adventured together for a while um, uh, and uh, have have traveled around and about. And right now, uh, you are falling uh, uh, through uh, a, a, a magical transport. Um, Alenica, how did that happen? What led to you and your companions getting thrown through a magical gate? Oh, it was clearly uh, we were escaping. Uh, a We had found our way into a wizard's lair, and he, we were in danger of being blown up by said wizard. And so we jumped through a magical portal to escape. And uh, uh, Kreva, uh, what was the deal with this wizard slayer that you were going into? What 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 drew you to go to that place in the first place? So he has this humongous uh, bell at the top of his tower or her tower. I don't know what the wizard is, but um, okay. enormous bell that they use for magical spells. And they can ring it. And we unfortunately decided that the best course of action would be to try in some way steal this enormous bell without even a plan how we're going to bring it down from that. Uh, maybe drop it from the, from the tower, but it backfired a little bit on us. Excellent, excellent. And uh, uh, Beltru, uh, uh, you three were able to grab something from the wizard's lair and the wizard's tower before you were... Uh, uh, jumped through this uh, portal. What was it that you found? Uh, we got the magical clapper for the bell. Um, okay. So as it was falling, we managed to grab onto that, and it sort of parted ways from the bell proper. But it's the mace that uh, that Elenica is using now because it's very, very effective. It's sort of very heavy at the top. Okay. That sounds good to me. I like that. Um, so you three would have gotten a brief vision as you went through the gate and, and fell of the red sands, uh, uh, in the distance, great wavering dunes, uh, behind a glint in the, in the distance, you would have seen maybe the shimmer of the ocean. Uh, uh, somewhere nearby, like uh, the, these dunes abut onto it. Um, but uh, uh, you're falling, though the magic of the gate clearly doesn't let you uh, uh, fall with any force, but you will come kind of crashing down. Uh, 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 probably Beltru, probably the most balanced in the landing. Uh, uh, followed by uh, Alenica, also used to these kinds of tumbles. Uh, is Kreva? Uh, uh, do you imagine him as uh, particularly good with the with with these kinds of physical activities? Hard to say. On one hand, uh, he he is a mercenary, so he might have been in, in similar situations. Um, does it translate to to some skills checks or to no no I'm just I'm just imagining do you imagine him as a, as a more physical guy who can can do those kinds of of rough and tumble roles uh, a little bit yes okay so so none of you look tr you know no one goes face first down into uh, the red sands or anything like that um, but you do crash um, uh, you'll hear the kind of popping up above that says to you that that 
something happened with the gate when you went through because you activated this magic quickly. Um, uh, you're pretty sure if that wizard is following you, he, she, it will take them some time to come after you. But what you will see is, uh, again, great red sand dunes. They go up to 300 feet uh, around. Uh, uh, it looks like actually climbing up them is a serious labor to do. Like, it would be a very difficult challenge. Uh, but the, the, the base of the dunes, it comes out into uh, scrub grass and rocks and things like that. And where you've particularly landed, uh, it looks like you're near some kind of pond or reservoir or retaining uh, place. Uh, what you will see is uh, there are trees uh, scattered along here. There's some, maybe it looks like some structures like uh, uh, as you kind of make your way around the reservoir. And it looks like there are a couple of passes out from the dunes. Uh, but it's getting on dusk where you are right now. Um, and probably the closest point uh, that is uh, provides any kind of cover right now is uh, a uh, enormous willow tree that stands at the edge of uh, the the reservoir closest to where you're at. Um, so, what do you want to do? How far away are the structures? Uh, it looks like it's probably about a uh, maybe a 30 minute walk you'd guess uh, over to where the structures are at um, it's hard to tell what they are from from this distance mm. well do we want to try to put some distance between us and the gate or just camp here for the evening and pick up our pace in the morning does it look as though there are people moving around over by those structures, or do they look kind of like ruins abandoned? Uh, let me have you make a perception check. So that's uh, what? I roll a 1d100, and I add my perception skill? That is correct. That's a 59. So right now, because of the, the, the way the light is hitting, uh, the, the sun has started to go down. It's getting cool. And so you've got more shadows uh, uh, over there. It's very hard to see what, what's, what's going on with that. Um, Kreva, what about you? I'm thinking maybe it would be good to wait until the night comes. And then look at the stars and try to confirm if we are still in the you know the same place. Like if the stars match from where we've been, or did the portal move us further away? Ah, excellent. And some of you have been sailors, so you may be able to do stargazing to determine where you are. It's a good secondary skill. Um, let me have you make a perception roll, Kreva. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so this is 15. 122. Oh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, Alenica and, and Belcher are kind of moving and looking at the distance, kind of judging it and kind of gotten up. You're looking at the sky to judge and that huge willow tree, uh, you realize that you're hearing this kind of moaning coming from it like there's this kind of layered sound the wind kind of catches the tree but it's clearly not the tree itself there's something else up in the there's, there's the the branches that hang down and the, the the leaves and there's definitely this this sound uh somewhat unnatural and unearthly rolling out from it 
Well, I tried to do? try to grab Bell and uh, and Elenica and try to you know bring their attention to this uh, this sound. Do you hear that? Uh, I just think that that clever, you know, he's being a little bit alarmist just because we fell through the gate. So I'm like, what? No, when he draws your attention to it, it's this weird, disharmonious crooning. Ooh. Like a couple of voices coming. And, and as you're kind of saying there, the wind sort of hits the the trees, but the, the, the tree seems to be moving, like maybe some of the leaves are rustling of themselves. Hmm. Elenica says, normally when I go into a uh, port... And I hear lousy singing. It means no good. Trouble. Well, maybe we should call him out then. Are there some skills for knowledge of the world or uh, knowledge of the dunes that we could purchase? Sure, sure. Uh, uh, so uh, are you more interested in the dunes or are you more interested in like monster lore? Or what kind of thing would you like? Monster lore would be pretty useful, I think, across the board. And if, at least we can, you know, try to decide if it is a monster or not. Yeah. If can just uh, so uh, do you want to put that at your 50, your 40s, or your 25? What do you want as your bonus on that? Let's put it at 40. Okay. All right, so write it in and go ahead and make a monster lore roll. All right. oh. One of the 32. Wow. Ooh, look at that. He's Holy on cow. fire. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Kreva, you will immediately chance to, to stop and listen. Uh, and you're kind of watching the, the light hit there. It is definitely... Uh, a, uh, a, a, a at least one, maybe maybe more, uh, Rusalkas. Uh, they are undead spirits that take corporal form at night. Uh, they tend to hover by water, um, and uh, they try to. They usually attack and try to drag drown people, uh, drag them under uh, under the lake bed there. Do I know how far from the water do they usually venture? Do they have a limit? At night, no. Once they take corporeal form, they can venture out and, and move and surround. They probably won't leave too far away, like wouldn't leave this area of the dunes, but uh, they, they could come certainly to where you, you three are standing. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to take out my sword, and then I'm strongly recommending that we will move towards the ruins. Sure, let's do that. Yeah, I don't want to hear that awful singing. Let's go. Um, so you draw your blade. You guys have been talking. Uh, you'll start moving towards that. And a as you start moving away, you will see, like, drop down out of the, the willow trees. These, at first it looks like maybe like a skeleton, like bones drop. Uh, and even as they kind of drop and hit, they're moving and you can see this uh, phantasmal uh, organs and then uh, muscle and then flesh. And there are these dripping gray green uh, figures with hair that, you know, drags down covered with, with leaves and mud and, they are on all fours, and they begin running towards you three. Um, so uh, you've got a round to do something before they're going to get to you. Um, you could certainly try to outrun them, or you could try to, to set something up. Bell, before I roll initiative, I'm going to give you guys a round to do something. So, Bell, what would you do? Uh, I don't know. To me, um, to me, I think that I want to get like 
I don't know, I want to get the high ground on them in some way. If they're going to be coming up at me, I want to be able to jump at them from a little bit higher to do a little more da damage. Okay, so what, what do you suppose is nearby that you can get up on top of to get the high ground? Um, well, it's the dunes, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, are Rock there any scrubs? Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll take for if there's any, any good size rock, I will go for that. Okay, so you so. jump on up uh, four or five feet up onto this rock and get yourself set. Uh, uh, Alinka, what do you want to do? So uh, remind me, is drawing in uh, a bow and stringing an arrow is that something that would take a full action, or can I do that and and shoot as well? Uh, so to to drawing and getting ready is an action. So if you want to prepare that, you can definitely do that. All right. Or if I wanted to, for example, go for my adventuring gear, I could uh, do something like that, right? Yes, you could. All right. So maybe I'll 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 just burn through my <laughs> consumable resources immediately, and I'll reach into my adventuring pack, and of course that has to include a handful of caltrops. So as these creatures are running on all fours towards us, I'm going to throw them into the sand between us and these creatures, and then kind of like back away as I do so. Ah, okay. Um let's see i think uh for that i'm actually going to have you make a roll just to determine the effectiveness of that sure um so uh let's have you roll uh, da, 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 da. let's actually have you roll your uh stalk and hide since this is kind of a trickery thing sure all right and just to be clear, the the actual stats, like Constitution Agility, those are not involved in the role, or are they built into the skill, just curiously? Uh, for the secondary skills, I'm not building the stats into those. Mm -hmm. For the other skills, yeah, the stats are built into uh, everything in there. Interesting. And it's just to make it simple for the secondary skills. Oh, my goodness. A four. So 59. That's a miss. Uh, so you will throw this, and... Uh, I say it's it's only going to slow one of them. Essentially, it's get, uh, only one of them gets gets delayed by it, kind of throwing off its its uh, action. But the other two come still coming towards you. Um, uh, Kreva, what do you want to do? Uh, can I start casting and move at the same time, or do I have to stand still while I cast? Uh, yeah, you can do a short move uh, back if you want. Uh, and prepare your spell. You can't run, but you can can move carefully back. Okay, so I would like okay. to move behind uh, Bell because I only have to follow. Uh, and at the same time, I would try to start casting the vacuum. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. All right, so I need everyone to roll your initiative. And that's, you're gonna roll 2d10. And on your bio page, it should say what your initiative bonus is. Okay. 13 for me. Okay, Bell. 13. 15 for me. Yeah. I've got 11. Okay, so they all go last. Um, uh, so let's start with, with Bell. Uh, they are going to move and try to attack on this round. They're going to go after uh, the, the group. Um, so uh, one of them looks like it's got those caltrops uh, kind of caught in its hands as it runs forward, and it looks like it's a little more vulnerable of the, the three. What do you want to do? I would like to uh, make it more vulnerable, <laughs> but that doesn't mean sweeps. I'm actually going to go for strikes. I want to um, hit, I'll take the martial arts strikes too. Now, my adrenal defense, would you describe that to me? You don't have to roll. That is just your defensive bonus. And that's to everything, or I split it between them? Isn't it crazy that that's to everything? Oh, yes. Okay. So then, um, yeah, I will use my full... Uh, um, strikes two on okay. this first one. Okay, so uh, uh, the the vulnerable one is going to have a 
a defensive bonus of just 10. So roll, add your attack bonus from your, your strike. Okay. And add 10 to that. Or subtract 10 from that, sorry. I did go for an advantage from the rock. Do I get anything for that? Oh, uh, so, also. okay. <laughs> you don't Absolutely. Have to. Um, no, actually, they give you positions as a plus 20, so your net gains can be a plus 10 on that. Okay. Oh, I put it in. You're in the wrong. I yeah, know. Wrong. I typed it. God. Uh, I, I bet I could get one more window up here for us. I know. Hundred fifty eight. Wow. Hundred and fifty eight. Um, so that is gonna be uh, uh seventeen points of damage and you're gonna do a C martial art crit. Now when you do criticals, uh you just roll a straight D one hundred and we see what happens. So Sherry, please roll a D one hundred to see what happens with your martial arts critical here. It always falls apart for me. Ooh, a seventy seven. Not as bad hey. as some rolls. Uh, so, uh, you leap up, yes. uh, jump, and you come down on sort of behind this thing, and you land on its leg, and uh, one of its legs gives. Awesome. And you hear this crack as the knee and the leg bends, and it, you'll hear this as it cries out. Um, it looks like it's not going to be able to move very quickly at all. It's going to be at a severe minus to try and get anything out of arm's reach from it right now. And its leg is bent at this strange and unnatural angle. All right. Hey, okay. uh, Creva, uh, what do you want to do? So since Bill took, take, took care of one of those, I'm going to try to cast the vacuum on the second one. OK. So for this, you make a spell casting roll. You, uh, you just don't want to roll an, a 0, 1 or a 0, 2 on okay. your percentile dice, which means there's a higher chance now that I've said that. <laughs> OK. So I just roll uh, 100, and that's it? Yep. Spellcasting okay. is is odd. 59. So X goes off. So how do you imagine the, the, the vacuum hit? What does that look like? How do you picture that? Um, I guess it catches the creature by surprise, because suddenly it cannot breathe. So in the, like, as it leaps through the through the ground, suddenly it stops for a moment, completely disoriented, because it cannot catch any more breath to, to run further. And then it comes back, and I, I guess the pressure of the air, I don't know, like splashes and squishes it to the ground. Perfect. Go ahead. Now you're going to roll. You do a critical to it. So this is another straight, just roll a D100, and we see what happens. 53. 53. Um, so... That blow hits it, and the air rushes and kind of knocks it back. Uh, it takes some more damage, uh, uh, some concussion hits, some hit point damage, uh, and it looks like it's not going to be able to attack for for another round. It's it's just going to have to try and take a defensive stance. Um, so it's blown back. It's uh, it purely defending right now. Um, and let's come to Elenica. So I think I'm going to try to use a adrenal. I'm going to pump myself up with adrenal speed. So okay. I'll be taking a minus twenty penalty for actions on and on this round. Uh, and then while doing that, I will then add a minus twenty. Uh, well, I don't know if I. I think I asked this question already. I will pull sure. out my. I am I within? Will I be within melee range or? You can certainly move to get within melee range. That would be pretty easy. Okay. Um, well, or you why could don't stay I... back here and load your bow up if you wanted to. Hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. I'll stay back and load up my bow and okay. uh, get myself continue to move away, whatever my short movement or whatever is I get to okay. do. So kind of fall back uh, a little bit, get your bow out, uh, do the concentration of the adrenal. Uh, that means you're not going to take a penalty on anything because between the the – prepping of the bow and the, the concentration, uh, uh, it's not going to be a problem. Yeah. Uh, so they are going to go now. Uh, one of them that is there on the ground, 
uh, uh, with its legs broken, is going to try and claw uh, at you, Bell. Um, That's right. Okay. Uh, you are you haven't leapt away, so you're within arm's reach. Uh, Bell, I hate to ask this question because I know it's going to be very bad for me because you're a martial artist. Um, but what is your defensive bonus? 78. 76. Unless I get something else. Okay. Um, I'm going to roll for it. And what is your armor type? Well, there's the thing. Oh. Uh, one. <laughs> one. Okay. Uh, so my total is a 20. Um, and so it, it goes to grab at you, but you are far too fast for it. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Um, tries to grab. Uh, the second one that got hit by uh, 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 Creva's uh, uh, vacuum uh, is, is just kind of staggered there. It is unable to attack on this round. Uh, the third one uh, that hasn't been hit and hasn't been limited is going to run up. And uh, he is going to uh, try to hit one of you. Me. Um, and that is going to... Uh, what do you... Do, do you I, I, I jingle my bells. So. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to roll a d6. I'll tell you what, I'll make it a little easier for it to have a chance to affect you. Uh, uh, one to three, it hits you. Or one to four, let's even say. Three. Okay. So what is your DB? It's the same low. 76. 76. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so this other one comes running up trying to get at uh, uh, now uh, Belle uh, since she's leapt down, uh, but she dodges out of the way of this thing. Uh, as it comes sailing past her. Uh, you've got one of them that is kind of stuck in position, but still still up. One of them that is going to spend another round recovering, and one of them that is fully fine right now. Uh, so let's come to the next round. Uh, uh, let's start with uh, Kreva on this round. So since Kreva is extremely heroic, the thing that uh, he will do is he will try to... Uh, Kill off the one that has the broken leg. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, is this uh, uh, your sword? Yes. Okay. Uh, so now, here's what you. What, you, what is your uh, a bonus with your uh, sword? Ten. Actually, actually, your bonus with your sword, it's a one-headed edged weapon. Oh, so your sure. bonus is actually going to be uh, 55. Okay. Uh, so go ahead. Uh, and uh, do you want to save some of that, that 55 towards your defense? Or do you want to just take this thing out? Uh, I want to take it out. Okay. Then roll and add 55. Okay. 53. Nice. Uh, so that is with its defensive bonus of that is going to be that. Uh, uh, so that's a slash. You hit it with a slash. Let's go ahead and have you roll the critical. Just another straight D100. 46. 46. Uh, you will hit this thing. Uh, uh, it's already down on the ground. It's got that twisted leg. And you'll come down and you'll bring that blade down on its back uh, and cut across it. And when you do that, it, it starts to to vanish. Uh, essentially, the, the phantasmal flesh starts to disintegrate and uh, then the bones and it will kind of just fade into dust there. You've, you've finished it off. Two of them remain. One of them is recovering. One of them that is in a fine condition. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, Bell. Is is there a provoke skill? Uh, we could make a secondary skill. 
I would like to try a provoke skill. Okay. Uh, what do you want to have as that bonus on that? Well, 50, of course. Okay. And so you're going to try and make it so you spent your action so that these two will attack you? Uh, the whole action? So you think it okay. All right. If that's what's required, certainly I will do that. You are a cruel person. That I am. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sure. Let's have you roll. Let's do it. Hundred and fifty. I criticaled on it. So you had, that's an open ended. She rolled a oh, hundred. Pretty. So she would roll that die again. So two hundred and seven. How is it that you draw the anger and ire and attention of these uh, undead water spirits? I think one of the things is, is that as as you said, they make those disharmonious songs and or noises, and whenever they do, she sort of corrects it with her bells, and then makes like a shimmery sound, like the water you know, when the wind's on the water with the bells. So it's just sort of like she's taunting them with the sound of of beautiful water, if that makes any sense. That's that's perfect. And it is it is getting in their ears. You know, you can hear from under their hair. So you know, I hear that sort of shriek and then the bells counter it and they are are driven to to go after you. They're 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 only going to be attacking you. So uh the your compadres your, your, your allies don't have to worry about being attacked for the moment. I'm a um, genius. Uh, uh, Alenica, how do you want to take advantage of this? Well, I've, I did my adrenal speed last time, so okay. I will roll that to see if I get two actions this round. All right. So I have a, a better, I have a decent chance here, he said, jinxing himself. Yep. Uh, and let's see. Uh, yes, I get two full actions this turn. So All right. I'm going to, can I shoot two arrows? What do you think? Yes, you can. All right, I'll shoot, I'll shoot uh, an arrow at the first one and see how I do. Okay. If that's all right, if I can take it one at a time. Absolutely. Let's have you make your uh, attack roll. All right, so I have a magic bow. So 79, all right. Uh, oh, and do I? No, with bow, there's no defense. I just I use it all for attack. Right? Yep. Right. No parrying. All right. 141. 141. Got that from that, so it becomes that. Um, so you're going to do an E critical, which is the highest level critical that you can do. Um, and it is a puncture. Essentially, as you send this uh, uh, arrow into them, go ahead and roll it. See what the effect of that is. A five. So it, it's a beautiful shot. It looks amazing, but then they turn just a little bit and it grazes them. Yep. <laughs> you have a second action. Well, I'm just a little frustrated by that that graze. So I'm going to that was just a warning shot across the bow. Now I'm serious, right? Okay. Let's try this again. All right. Let's have your roll. Quick shot. 132. 132. Um so uh, still a good shot, does a, a lot of damage to it. You're going to roll a D puncture on this. Here's my crit roll, 41. 41. Oh, you will hit this thing. Uh, uh, this is the one that's been relatively untouched, we'll say. Uh, and the first shot hits it, does sticks in it, but doesn't quite stick. The second shot hits it. Uh, in the thigh uh, uh, in there, and it kind of turns around and uh, it's staggering towards the three of you, but but just collapses. Again, you'll hear the the, the chinking of bones as it kind of crashes to the, the ground. And there's that of uh, like uh, the smell of bog water mm -hmm. and uh, the, you know, murk will come up. Um, there's just one of these things left. And uh, because of the the uh, effect that uh, uh, Krevia did to it, it spent its round parrying. Uh, so 
that's all clear for it now. Uh, we come back to the top of the next round. Uh, Kreva Bell, who wants to go first? Um, let's see here. Well, I, I think Kreva did so well last time. It's up to him. I'm I'm not particularly excited to you know to to go to the front though. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm gonna you know hang around in the back and maybe <laughs> can we change the order of initiative? Can you know? Can I? Yeah, you can my... you can delay so that uh, that she can go first. I'm gonna hesitate a little here. Okay. <laughs> okay, then I will walk up and give this thing such a kick. Okay. Uh, so I assume martial arts strength strike two. Does it have the 10 defensive bonus? It does have a 10 defensive bonus. Okay, so it's plus 66. 154. All right. Uh, so you will do uh, some hits to it, and you're going to do a C martial arts strike to it. A 39. Softening it up for Elenica. Okay. Um, uh, it is a light chest strike, uh, and uh, it would be stunned normally, but it ignores uh, the first round of stuns uh, as an undead. Um, but you do hit it solidly there. Uh, it is still up. Uh, uh, who wants to go next, Carver? Are you still delaying to let Elenica go first? I think that since you know, since um, Bella has taken uh, captured you know, the attention of the of the monster, I'm gonna try to you know go on the side, and maybe from the back uh, uh, stab it with my sword. Okay, uh, let's have you make your attack roll. He's got a flanking bonus. Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven. Uh, minus the defensive bonus, ten uh, plus a flanking bonus. Um, is going to be that. Uh, so you are going to do uh, some physical damage to it, and you're going to get to roll a C crush critical. Okay. Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. Uh. You hit it in the back of the head, like hard. Um, and this thing has no helmet or any kind of protection on. Uh, so your blade hits, and there is a kind of a phantasmal cracking uh, as the, the head gives way. And then there'll be that shriek as this undead spirit is shattered uh, and broken. And again, that smell of uh, uh, bog water and the last of these is dead. And they're all gone. Um, you'll stop and listen, and you don't hear any more of that uh, that sort of discordant sound from, from the tree over there. Now, are these things truly gone? Or will they come back again in, like, tomorrow night? I will say with the role that... Uh, uh, Krevia got that he can tell you that it will be at least a uh, like a lunar cycle, like a, a month before they can reform. Is so, there? Oh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Is, is there a way to? Uh, how should we say? Permanently put them out of their misery. <laughs> a, a cleric could. Um, or if you had the, the right ritual implements and things, you could possibly uh, uh, dismiss and ban them. I have a different question. Can I uh, collect my caltrips and arrows, or is that something? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, because these things are discorporated, any arrows that you shot them with would have fallen to the, the sand, so you can pick those up okay. without a problem. So as I think Elenica I'm, is, oh, go ahead, go ahead. As you are collecting the arrows, I'm gonna go come come around. They must have left some other bodies from the previous ones. Let's try to maybe look for something. 
Maybe they kept it by their by their tree, huh? So just before we go to the tree, I'd just like to make sure that there are no more of those. Like those were the all, according to my knowledge. Like no, like five more will not spring out of behind the tree. No, uh, yeah, you'll you'll listen, you watch carefully for a bit. Uh, the tree only moves with the wind. You don't hear any more of that sound. They're they're driven by instinct, so uh, they're not particularly clever. So you're pretty certain that there are no more uh, uh, up there. Um, so how do you want to approach this? Are you asking Bell? Because Bell will just saunter up. <laughs> Uh, so uh, uh, move up to this, uh, uh, kind of look, it's, it's a big, tall willow tree. Um, uh, let me ask our rogue, what is our, our rogue doing? So I think the rogue is thinking, where would these creatures hide their, their valuables if they have any from previous victims? I'm looking for a hollow at the base of the tree, and if not, perhaps some... Uh, what's the word? Like, I don't know what the word is. Like a hollow or something, but up in the branches, perhaps. Okay. Because they fell out of the branches, after all. Um, let me have you make a uh, a climbing roll first. All right. One thirty-five. Oh yeah. So you, it's like a ship's mast. Uh, uh, you know, you go up that no problem. Um, uh, kind of look around there up in the trees under the leaves. It's probably horrible up here. They're leftover bits and pieces scattered around. Um, let me have you make a perception roll. Sixty-five. You will take uh, a look around, and uh, it looks like uh, you can reach in, and they they definitely have stuck some things in the tree, and you're able to get a few of the things, but there's probably more down in it. But you'd probably have to cut the tree down, this big old willow tree, to get at that. But you can get about. Uh, six coin worth of like uh, baubles and coins and bits and things from what you're able to get out of that. Could I there, are no, the there are no bells. Yeah, no bells. <laughs> we'll just have I'm to sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, Philip, what did you say? Could I cast erosions on the dead tree? Is it still counting as organic or could I try to this, you know, uh, make it you know, crumble to dust. Oh, that's an interesting Ooh, or cracks idea. Call. Yeah. Sure. Uh, let's have you make a casting roll. Let's see. Uh, this will be kind of determine how significant your effect is. Spend the power points and then make a casting roll. Actually, I would like to use my item. So uh, this is a second spell for the item. I think I can cast two spells. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, I'm going to make a resistance roll for the tree. Uh, so yeah, you can run this split uh, uh, along the inside uh, of it and it'll kind of crack open like a horrible tree pinata. Um, and Bones and bits of armor and such come slouthing out, kind of washed down. It's pretty horrible there. Um, but I will say that you can find another six coin worth of uh, goods. Um, and let me do a little roll here real quick. Grab my... Random chart. That's right. Magic items. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, there is a kind of wrapped in a fine, like, would have been lovely sort of Samite cloth at one point, you know, that cloth that has metal threads running through it. It's wrapped up in that. When you open it up, it is this like animal brush, very nicely made with, with sort of beautiful chestnut wood and inlaid and, and markings on it. And by all rights, given the weather and the, the rot and stuff, this thing ought to have been, ought to be just in, in terrible shape, but it's pristine. It's like new. And it's definitely seems magical. What's it do, Krava? Uh, okay. Can I buy some, I don't know, there's some identification skills or? Ah, you actually have a skill called uh, Staffs and Wands. Okay. And that, that's the skill you roll to see if you can figure out what an item does. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. So plus 44, yes? Yep. Oh boy. I'm not I've had those very nice well. syntax. I hate that sometimes. 61. <clears throat> so it clearly has a couple of powers that you're not able to identify. But the, the most basic thing that it do, does is you imagine that if you brush an animal with this, it will appear to be the most sort of beautiful, shiny, lustrous looking example of that animal. Um, uh, so it's sort of uh, the, the most basic thing it does, it can 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 make uh, an animal look amazing when it's been brushed with this. So, so I can become a sheep trader, for example. Exactly, exactly, or a horse trader. There are all kinds of, of uh, uses for this. So I can totally imagine, Alenica, if you share, do you share the, the your discovery of this? So I mean, like, because Alenica... Of course. Yeah, so Alenica would say, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We take the nine coin we just picked up, or whatever that was, 12 coin. We go to the a town. We buy spend all of it on animals. We take them around back. We brush them. We come back in. We sell the animals. <laughs> Wash, rinse, repeat. But we buy the oldest... And yeah. then, you know, the most used one. And we then draw we those. Buy low, yep. sell high. Yeah. Yep. Where did it turn into bells? <laughs> <laughs> you see, money can be exchanged for goods and services, including bells. Yes. The bells are very important. Speaking of, is, is am I, did I understand right that only Elenica handles the coins? Or I should put that 12 coin in my inventory? That is correct. I, just, I didn't want to claim that just without being clear on that. <laughs> right. uh, this seems like a good place for us to take our five-minute break here. Uh, so let's take five, and we'll come back uh, uh, with the, the, the crew moving on. Cool. Sounds great. Mm -hmm.
All right. Take a slug of this water. So I don't think any of you took any damage there, did you? All right. Soon. Uh, let's see. Um, so as I understood it, once you've gotten these things together, it is starting to get dark. Um, do you want to camp? Or do you want to try to, to move on uh, along the shoreline over to where those structures were? Here while it's dark. I would rather not camp by the Gru Willow. <laughs> Fair. Is it? Are we going to have a weather problem tonight? Is it? What's the? Is it going to be cold? Will we need shelter? Uh, no, it's actually uh, uh, relatively temperate here. Uh, you weren't sure what it was going to be like with with the dunes and the sands, but it doesn't seem hot like a desert. Uh, uh, you're getting maybe a cool wind off of this reservoir, but uh, otherwise, no no real weather problems. One suggestion is that we just kill the predator from this sort of area. So probably the others, maybe they have their own territory. And this place it will be relatively safe now because, you know, whatever creatures are around here, they might not like coming around here. Certainly, uh, you don't know the terrain. Uh, it is it is dark, um, uh, so you can you can camp if you want. Uh, uh, everybody can mark a ration off. Okay. And uh, uh, was was one of you going to uh, put a, a skill into stargazing? Uh, if you just put a 25 in it, uh, we can use that as a fiction to define that you will know sort of where you are uh, in the world. Elenica, is that going to work for you? Yeah, I, I can do that because of my uh, sailing background, right? I kind of okay. yeah. look up and recognize or don't perhaps, right? And I'll show you real quick on this. Uh map here I'll show you an old map that i've used before and uh you can see you're over towards the uh eastern side uh so, sort of this area inside this big red circle there mm. um, definitely you can place it that uh it is it is the, the ursine dunes uh you know that it it borders out to the, the wilds here um, that if you head inland, the, the next closest city is the uh, the city of Marlinko, um, a, a ways outside of that. And that hits a kind of a trade hub for Arake. Um, I will assume that you take the usual watches that are, are classic for a uh, uh, an adventure. I'll um, but uh, the night passes uneventfully. You're able to, to sleep, rest, uh, trade over uh, watches. It does seem as you suspected that this area has a, for the animals, they can stay clear of it, especially at night. Um, and so nothing comes this way uh, 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 during the, the course of the night. Um, Morning comes a little bit late because of the, the, the dunes being so high near you. Uh, it takes a bit for the light to kind of break over that. Um, uh, but you can, can wake up fairly refreshed um, uh, and proceed on towards the, the area that you saw there before. As you uh, head closer uh, to it, you will realize that what you're seeing is uh, a stand of trees, fairly large, looks like birch trees, like a good size of, of some old growth and new growth trees. And then 
all kinds of wood structure here and uh you know there are various layers and levels uh standing up against this it's it very clearly is a giant wooden dam uh and it looks old and there's some new parts some old parts it's it's very large um the the forest here of these birches kind of grows around the the base of it there are sort of sloping paths that go up like uh that are clearly man-made to go up to the top of the uh dam and come down and uh uh it looks it looks quite uh quite large and in very good condition is this a landmark we would have heard of probably not it is back here in this 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 sort of wilderness area so probably not do i understand correctly that we're at the bottom of the dam well you're kind of coming along the the uh the the reservoir here um let me actually show you sort of uh I'll pop to another map here real quick oh, kind of uh let me see reveal areas kind of move you over to this other map. Uh, so you kind of popped in uh, on, on Roll20. You can see down here where the, the willow is. You're at location 25. And uh, then you kind of come up to the top of this lake, and uh, uh, it's raised up, so you can kind of uh, walk uh, up some slopes and ramps to get up to it, or you can walk around it and continue on to sort of the, the exit way uh, to the west or continue on to the the northeast. Um, it's it's pretty substantial. So the dam is functional, actually. It's, it's blocking off some water from going to the, to the yeah, lake. Yeah, it, it looks like it's keeping this whole sort of reservoir from... Uh, spilling out uh, into the rest of the dune area. Hmm. Could, I, could I bring it down? It, it, it calls to you as a sorcerer who revels in <laughs> destruction. It calls to you, but it would be it would be a long term project to to bring down something this large. Um, and. Uh, uh, as you are approaching closer, you will see that uh, there are some things moving around it that are clearly maintaining it, and you will see a couple of very large, and by very large, I mean larger than, than a human, beavers. Okay, you're kidding. Nope. There are are a couple of giant beavers that are are moving around on this dam. They are are pushing uh, wood up, and you see them uh, like get out of the water and climb up and and walk up some of the walkways. They are clearly clearly in charge of this dam. Now, is the dam look like a beaver dam, or does this look like something that's been engineered? I think it's both. Mm -hmm. It it has the look of sort of the the, the beaver style wood and, and the chewing and, and those kinds of things, but it is seriously engineered, multi level, old, heavily maintained. These are none of these are not your run of the mill beavers. Huh? Can I roll a monster roll to lore to try to figure out what kind of beavers are, are those? Were beavers or something like this? Make a monster roll. Oh my God! Were beavers. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> These are not monsters. They are, in fact, a... 
uh, a, a people, a species. They are not were creatures. They are large, uh, uh, you know, uh, animals, large intelligent animals. Um, they're very, very rare. Um, in fact, you thought that they, they were fairly extinct. Um, but they actually, they have language. They have uh, a kind of a civilization. Uh, 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 and they're, they're definitely not, not unintelligent monsters. Would the brush work on them? <laughs> yes. Huh. <laughs> I think we can make some trade here. <laughs> I think so. Especially if they've got like a daughter who's going to be married soon. That's right. We need to find someone who got spurned by their lover who needs this brush, right? A beaver. We're going to get like a beaver Cyrano de Bergerac here. <laughs> so how do you want to approach this? Do you want to go around? Do you want to, do you want to uh, head up to, to uh, talk with them or, or what do you want to do? Yes, we have to talk to them. Also, I need rations. Exactly. Yeah, Alanica's like, well, I'm down to my last one, so we uh, need some oatmeal. Uh, if you walk out, sort of in the open, uh, uh, there will be uh, a couple of these beavers that will will notice your approach, um, and they they don't necessarily go to, to to greet you but they're 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 a little wary you can see that they are armed um uh that they have a, a, a sort of uh staves that they keep with them quarter staff type things that uh, look like multi-purpose they can use that for tools and stuff and uh you can see as they move they've got those those large beaver tails and you're kind of worried about what a hit from one of those would be like it probably Probably hurt quite a bit, um, but getting uh, a mattress. Yeah, uh, a really firm mattress. Um, but uh, one of them, uh, it's maybe a little bit taller than the others. It's got that sort of a, a silver mixed with brown of its fur, and uh, it will will approach, and uh, it will. Do you have language? Uh, uh, yes, Elenica says. Uh, we do. Hail, friends. Hail. Hello. What uh, brings you to the reservoir? Funny you should ask that. Uh, let's say we're lost, actually. Ah. Uh, well, this is... This is one of the endpoints uh, for those who travel out into the dunes. I am Zimzev. Uh, I am the caretaker, uh, head project manager, and engineer for uh, this reservoir dam. It is very uh, impressive. Uh, thank you. Is, we are our an unbroken line of dam engineers and project managers going back th through the ages. That is a damn story. That's damn impressive. Ah, I see what you did there. Yes. Um, uh, well, uh, come with me. I trust you will not be violent. We are just kind of looks, yeah, simple travelers. And and uh, again, yeah, it, it makes sense because uh, uh, Beltru is unarmored and has these bells. Uh, uh, Krevia uh, is uh, is uh, uh, nondescript, trying to look ordinary. Um, and you're you're a very tiny, slight thing to these uh, uh, giant beavers. Um, and and Zimzev will 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 walk you uh, in. Uh, there is 
uh, up here toward the top. What has clearly been designed is kind of a public area. Um, it, it kind of opens up. It's 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 a large room. There are some some wooden chairs and things around. Some craftsmanship to that. It has a rustic look to it, but it's definitely carved in wood. Um, and you can see that they've got a, a big table here uh, with a scale model of the dam on it. They've very carefully done that, and they've done the water effects to it as well. They've built the little dunes around the outside. The, they've got that. Uh, they've got a little aquarium set up to kind of model that. And uh, 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 Zimzev kind of proudly walks you over to it. So this is this is the dam. It's a scale model. We, we haven't updated it with the latest features, but uh, it's it's pretty accurate to, to what we're doing here. Wow. Zimzev, could you satisfy my curiosity and, and tell me what is the practical purpose of um, building a dam in a, in a desert? We are an unbroken lineage of <laughs> beavers who have crafted this dam to to <laughs> keep this reservoir uh intact it is it is our 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 duty our heritage and our responsibility so yes my curiosity is satisfied oh Thank good you. good 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 um gruel would you like some gruel that would be lovely and he will have a, a very basic fare. Um, I mean, uh, it's uh, actually uh, so it's kind of like some some, some uh, nuts and things like that, like a, a muslix kind of thing. Uh, and then uh, these big loaves of rye bread that uh, is fresh, clearly freshly baked, slices those puts butter on it for you and, and serves that up to you. I get all excited. Just, this is awesome. Ooh, yes. fresh bread. bread. Yes, yes, we're very lucky. There's a rye field uh, nearby. Uh, and uh, uh, if you're very, very careful and do not upset the things, uh, then you can harvest from it throughout the seasons. Do not upset what things? Uh, there is a protector in the rye field, uh, and you don't want to let it catch you, um, uh, like causing problems. All right. So don't trample the rye. Exactly. Exactly. What does it look uh, like? Uh, it's it's a little bit like the avodnik. Um, uh, like a little troll thing. Um, there are a couple of vodniks around and about uh, the area. There's there's one. Uh, there are some other magical forces around the rye field that can get upset. So just just you can harvest, but be 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 cautious. All right. I think that's fine. I had don't think we had any plans to harvest rye on this trip is that right uh, he serves a, a very basic kind of uh, bark tea to you uh, 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 you know been soaked it's pretty strong and uh, 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 he will will uh, if you let him chat he will spend a good deal of time talking about the sluice ways and uh, uh, the the sort of a uh, 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 attempts to 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 counter the deforestation as they've brought the new birch and they've got old growth and new growth. Uh, they've got this uh, 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 below ground uh, water viewing area uh, to to look out. You know, talks all that kind of thing. You guess maybe a half dozen of these beavers. Sort of, you get the sense of that through the conversation. Um, and finally, once once you've kind of eaten and you've let him talk as much as you let him talk, he will finally say, uh, and so, I'm sorry, and so what is your story? 
Well, we were looking for a bell and we got lost. A bell? Yeah, you wouldn't happen to know of any bells in the area, would you? Uh, well, I know that there is a, a, a bell over by Medved's area. Um, I think there think there's one in the glittering tower. She perks up. She's like, "Where is that from here?" I haven't been to it, uh, but I know that if you head out uh, to the the west, uh, past the the rye field, and I believe if you head south from the rye field, uh, that. You get into Medved's area, you should be able to find someone or something there that can direct you from there. Oh. This rye field's turning out pretty good and handy for uh, navigating. Okay. You, you, when you go out, if you go out to this, the western way, you'll go out and it will. the path will split and it'll go slightly uh, northeast and southwest, you want to head southwest to get to the rye field. Oh, that's fantastic. And could you tell me about this Medved? He's Medved. Well, pretend we've he's... gotten so lost that we don't know Medved. Uh, he's the, uh, he's the, he's a little god. A little god of the, the, the bears. He's a, an old a uh, hero quester. He he went uh, uh, some time ago and went up in uh, to the stories uh, uh, to find a place to live for his people. Um, but uh, his family was separated, and only he was left. And he met a great bear there, and he killed it uh, and ate it, and then he was sorry about it. So. He and the bear became one, and he is. Then he lives here. He is. He's a little god of the the wilderness here, and again, little god as I understand it. Uh, he has the 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 bears serve him, as do some of the centaurs. Um, but the centaurs are kind of uh, they're kind of rude. So, just be aware they're kind of kind of rude they they charge people tolls and such but medved uh 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 there's a there's a temple to him um and uh then i believe he is either at the glittering palace or nearby to the glittering palace so it's his bell it might be i just know that there's a bell there Oh, okay. Well, we could just go and take a look at it, right? Yeah. So, uh, do you want us to take any messages to anyone when we go there? No, no. We're a, 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 a we're a, a, a self-sustaining, uh, uh, e ecological uh, um, uh, damming community. Oh, okay. I didn't know. But except if... for the rye. But that's more of a treat than anything. Well, it keeps coming back, doesn't it? So. Oh yes, yeah, absolutely. So it's like practically needs you to harvest it. Um, We're losing money not doing it. So, if we want to get to Nedved, we have to go through the Vodniks territory. Do I do I understand correctly? Uh, uh, well, the the, the rye field is the, you'll only see the Vodnik in the rye if you cause problems. Otherwise, you shouldn't see uh, see that particular Vodnik. So, mm. engineer to engineer here, like, what exactly constitutes a, a problem in you know in Vodnik's you know dictionary? Um, chopping down great stalks of rye, uh, setting fire to it, stomping through, uh, uh, killing things around it. I'd say that all probably constitutes problems. Anything within that span, I think you could probably, uh, you know, uh, build build a, a table out of that. 
but okay. Reasonable. Yeah. The other Vodnik, if you continue on around the reservoir up to the north, that's where the other Vodnik, that's where Zoltan is. You don't don't want to mess with Zoltan. What is Zoltan guarding? He's got a little pool there. Uh, he likes to challenge people to wrestle. Is he any good at it? Uh, when he's in the water, he's very good at it. Oh, he's a he's a drowner, like the Ris uh, Yes, yes. But he's not uh, not one of the the undead like the Rusalkas. He's he's a he's a fey thing. Hmm. But yeah, he'll he'll challenge you uh, he, he, until he he gets it in his head to challenge and drown you. He's he's decent company. Oh, he hasn't tried to drown you, has he? No, no. But it's very hard to drown us. So you've wrestled him. Uh, there are stories about uh, ancestors of ours who ha uh, 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 had perhaps a little too much uh, acorn wine and uh, wandered down to uh, wrestle uh, Zoltan. They are cautionary tales. <laughs> Good to know. And if we were to travel to the Glittering Tower, how many, how many days walked would you say that might be? Uh... Uh, if you follow the lines of the dunes and don't attempt to cross over, um, I would guess uh, you could be there within four or five hours. Oh, excellent. Okay. The, the dunes are large uh, by height, but if you stick to the paths, uh, it is not all that long between the areas. I don't suppose you have uh, food that you could uh, that is available for us to take. We would be willing to pay, of course. Mm, well, uh, uh, we don't work with coin. I know just what you mean. What is it that you do like? Well, we, we barter for goods, uh, tools, things like that. Do you have anything of that sort? Well, let me see. I have a couple of trinkets. Okay. Do you have a trinket that you think would appeal to uh, this uh, uh, giant beaver? Sure. I have, I have picked up at some point something that's, it's like a lens. But I don't know what it's a lens for. But it seems like the kind of thing that he could figure out. So I'll show it to him. And I say, you seem scientifically minded. I found this. And I thought maybe you could put it to use. Hmm. I'll work on his uh, pride. Uh, do you want to try and do it? Do you have it like a trading skill? I, I could have one. That's what I'm asking. Do you? Sure. Since, since you can't deal in coin. Exactly. So bartering at 40, let's say. Okay. Okay. Let's have you make a bartering roll. I'm rolling way too well tonight. Yeah, that's not going to come back to bite you. I know. <laughs> uh, say this. Oh, this is very well made. Um, I mean, it's the sort of thing that's going to take an engineer to figure out. Well, and we happen to be engineers, so that's that's this is this is a, a meeting of minds. Just put his little fingers together; um, uh, they are adorable when he does it. Um, Stubby he, little fingers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he will offer you three rations for the 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 lens. I I will accept that, provided that I can also have a cup of acorn wine. Yes, yes. He'll he'll give you he'll give you a, a a little stone flask or ceramic flask of uh, acorn wine. It does not smell particularly good. 
that's okay. I'll use it for a wound or something. Okay. It's clearly like acorn wine and then some kind of like uh, bark herbs and spices in there. Um, cinnamon and stuff. A gin uh, of uh, sort, but with yes. different botanical. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, that's, that's fine. Fine. Absolutely. Uh, um, I'm, I'm more than, more than glad to trade with you. Do you need anything else? Well, if if Medved isn't that far away, do they have um, do they have like a market there? Do you know? I don't think so. This oh. is the wilds. We are the most civilized of of the people you'll meet here. Other people are rude. Oof. Well, then I'm very glad we met you. Yes, you're very lucky. So perhaps I should go ahead and try to trade something as well. I don't know if how long we'll be in the wild. So I have with me here in this advent this kit, and I reach into my adventurer's kit, and I pull out a hammer and some pitons. Hmm. That's a good quality hammer. Do you have a trading skill? Uh, I think I do now. Let's see what okay. I have it at. Um, let me make sure I don't actually have anything relevant. Nope. All right. So I'll take it at I'll take it at forty. I think she's the kind Ooh. that would be pretty good at wheeling and dealing. Okay. Trading. All right. I suspect I won't roll as well as. Uh, Ninety four was pretty. Yeah. Pretty good. All right. Seventy nine. Not a disaster, I guess, but uh, he'll 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 offer you a ration for the the, the hammer and pitons. All right, I will uh, I will take it. So I'll swap one of my adventuring gear for one of, for a ration. All right, um, and he'll look at you and uh, you. Uh, he's trying to judge uh, my fellow engineer. Uh, is there anything that you need? As a true engineer, I'm prepared for everything. Well, Thank you. It's our, our motto, absolutely. Well, I have one of my sons uh, walk you down the ramps uh, and point you towards uh, uh, the path if you don't uh, uh, need anything else. That would be uh, feel lovely. Free. Yeah. Feel free to come back uh, uh, if, if things do not go as you wish. Thank you. That is a very kind offer. We may take you up on it because you have been a lovely host. And this is an amazing place. And uh, he, he whistles for one of the, the, the clear, the younger of, of these beavers. You know, their, their pelt is, is much more sort of the, the dark uh, brown, uh, none of the gray. And it looks super excited to have the chance to to walk along with you and ask you and you, you came from down did you did you see the risakas yes actually we we had to kill them oh yeah sometimes it happens and but then they come back and woo they woo on night that's scary yeah yeah and so yeah we go down this ramp and then we have to cut here and then i have to step over this and, and why would you step on this part and here and here's where we're doing the new uh uh setup here with that thing yes what are you doing okay. at the new setup oh uh we're trying to build a a, a an extension to do a a backup for the the sluice so we can uh we got some of the areas that have uh some of the old rot and so we do a changeover every uh, generation or two and so that's what we're gonna do with that one so that's what we're gonna do um, oh that's and this is this is the path. If you go this way, you go up uh, between these dunes here and follow the path that way, uh, you'll get to the split. Um, and if you go up that way, you keep around. That's where Zoltan's at. You don't want to go there. <sighs> that's what we heard. Okay. All right. It was good meeting you. Uh, what was your name? Uh, uh, Vetus. Vetus. It was good meeting you, Vetus. Have you ever been to Medved? No, no. That's 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 outside. That's where everybody's rude. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, well, so you wouldn't know, like, if there was anything that you wanted from there, right? No, I can't imagine there's anything we need from there. 
Okay. You guys do seem to have set yourself up pretty well. It, it kind of pauses. Like, he clearly doesn't want to say this. Uh-huh. If you were to find any bread that wasn't rye... <laughs> Okay. And bring that back. I'm sure me and my brothers would, would be very happy. All right. I have some Believe sourdough on me. You want oh, to do you? Yeah. Oh, oh. I, I, sometimes people come through and they've got breads and it doesn't taste like rye. Because if, if you just eat rye for a really long time, you start to not like rye. Um, so, and sometimes we taste the bread and it's like sweet. Like super, like, mm. So yeah, sourdough. Um, uh, yeah, he says uh, I've got uh, 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 I've got some uh, 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 like uh, hard hard cider. Do you want some of that? Hard cider. Uh, sure, why not? Is, and, is it uh, acorn he'll... cider? Pardon? Is it acorn cider? Uh, no, no. There's actually some crab apples that uh, grow up. Uh, to the north, and uh, uh, we ferment those okay. to get the cider. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and uh, he'll take some of your sourdough, and he'll he'll hand you the the, the little uh, ceramic jug of uh, the cider, and and he'll start nibbling with those teeth at the sourdough, and he's like, "Oh, it's so good." <laughs> We'll definitely look for more if we end up coming back through here. It's good to meet he, you. He looks up at you. His little cheeks are puffed out from the, the bread. <laughs> so. Ooh, for sure. And uh, uh, you can travel on. Uh, do you want to head north to talk to the Vodnik or do you want to head on uh, towards the, the, the rye field? I don't know if I want to wrestle a Vodnik. Yeah, that sounds risky. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty good at those kinds of things, but it's in water, so I lose my advantage. That you would. I say the rye fields. What do you think? I just would like to say that if we decide to steal a bell from a god... Let's have a plan first. How are we going to do oh. this? So it doesn't end up like the last time. And this time we'll end up like in the middle of the ocean when we try to get out. We lacked out the last time. Let's this time be a little slightly more prepared. All right. All right. I think that's reasonable. We learned our lesson. That's right. The lesson is he who hesitates is lost. <laughs> and also get your code words I, mean, I thought tippy toes meant attack you thought it meant retreat it was <laughs> it just went terribly wrong so we, we agree that we didn't know what the, the word was and that's all we'll say about it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh so i'm gonna roll so before we, we go into the right field, can I just roll for the, this Vodnik knowledge and try to make sure that what uh, Zimzev told me about what might anger the Vodnik matches my knowledge so that by accident we won't trample something and, you know, sure. cause his anger? Let's have you make that roll. Sorry. All right, seven. Yeah, it does sound good. Vodniks typically have a place, like if there's a rye field, that the 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 field is probably his place. If it's a pool, the field is the the pool is his place. So, uh, uh, everything that he said seems to to, to fit with what you know about uh, the Vodniks. Um. You will move along this track, the dunes on either side of you, uh, as you uh, head uh, uh, forward. And uh, I'm going to have to 
scroll real quick here on this chart. That's that. You are moving along this track, and uh, up ahead you can see that there's a uh, uh, the split. Can I have everyone make perception rolls? For our one oh seven, one oh seven, sixty seven, sixty seven, and cherry eighty eight. Eighty eight. So you are moving along, uh, getting to that that split. Uh, there's actually some stands of of uh, again. Uh, some burnt trees and some new growth trees around, scattered around the edge of the the dunes. Some rocks. There's kind of this uh, path, and it kind of and it splits. And Elenica, there's there's a glint of something like just for a second, like up on by some of these rocks that are up ahead and maybe up about 20, 30 feet. Uh, up onto the dunes, maybe there's a glint like like metal, but it, it it just it's just there for a second, and then it's gone, and your your hackles kind of go up. Mm. So I will uh, just very nonchalantly slow down and say and whisper, "Wait, uh, there's someone up there in the rocks," and I'll kind of casually draw my take my bow off my shoulder, right. And uh, say maybe we should uh, come around the back and see if we can't surprise them because they might be trying to surprise us. I will casually take out my sword. Okay. Equally casually. <laughs> so so casually is 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 maybe not exactly the the best way to put that, but yeah, you guys can can draw uh, weapons and. Uh, yeah, you're pretty sure that there are some people up there who have, have probably heard or seen you coming in the distance and are setting up uh, ambush style. Really? <clears throat> so can we out ambush the ambush? What will it take to do that, sir? We have the skills, we have the will. <clears throat> uh, essentially, you'd have to try and vanish from the path. Mm hmm. And, and make your way along the cover. So that would be a stalk and hide check to do that. I am ready to be a rogue. Before we do that, just one question. Could I try to deoxygenate that area where the, sure. our ambushes are? Do I, or do I have to see that place? Or maybe slowly try to, you know, um, uh, well, strangle them by not having oxygen and well, have them, you know, Let's see. Let me check that. What is the range on that spell? What does it say? Uh, let me take a look. It, I think if the R is the range, then it's like 100 with an apostrophe at the end. Yeah, so 100 feet. Um, so that's probably about uh, 33 meters or so. Um, so you'd, you'd have to get a little closer to be able to do that. Okay. Um, but conceivably you could. They probably probably wouldn't uh, uh, kill them, but it would certainly make them have to move. They would they would realize they'd start to to uh, get lightheaded, and they'd have to to move out of their secure position. Okay, would it be advantageous to us or not? We could certainly uh, uh, try to get closer and then do that. Yeah, and you could could make them expose themselves then. Um, but first, well, you'd have to get close. Okay. Um, 
Let's let's do it. Let's. Okay. I mean, wait, wait. Actually, let me first check with you know with my uh, with my companions whether they think this is a good idea. <clears throat> well, I know Elenica wants to step off the path into the woods and try to hide and come around behind them. So perhaps if you're going to do that, you'll flush them out and then I'll be ready to ambush them. And that means someone has to stick to the path and sound like three people coming down the path or look like it, sound like it. Okay. Okay. I can so, do that. As I understand it, uh, so uh, Beltru, you're going to continue to move on, making noise, taunting and drawing them. Uh, 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 Kreva, you're going to try to sneak up to get within range to be able to do that destruction of the oxygen. And uh, uh, Elenica, you're going to try and sneak around to get yourself in a, a an ambush position, right? Yep. Okay, I think the first person we're going to have to roll for, person who's moving potentially furthest, is uh, Elenica. So Elenica, let's have you make that stalk and hide roll. You also, I'll remind you, you have four fate points. Maybe I'll use one of those now. Okay. I, I don't want to blow the whole plan in the first roll. Sure. We'll see. You get to re-roll, and uh, you take the higher of the two results. Oh, wow. So roll again. Okay. Uh, so that that that's going to crest uh, 175 plus. Uh, so I will give uh, your your comrade uh, uh, there, uh, Kreva, uh, he, his, her uh, cautious movement and sneaking is going to give you a plus 30 bonus on your stalk and hide roll. Sweet. Thanks. So let me just find this skill. Okay, I have 35 for stock and hide. So roll plus 65. Oh boy. <clears throat> 76. Okay. Uh, is that your final answer? Or do you want to spend a fate point and re roll? Oh, sorry, you muted. Oh, role master. Yes. So, uh, finally, let's have you roll your taunt, Sherry. I will happily do this. See if I can. Okay. So, an 88. Okay. So you're drawing some attention. So let me describe uh, the the situation. Uh, uh, Elenica, you move like you are a shadow moving along the dunes. No one sees you. No one hears you. Uh, you're gone. Uh, you take advantage of every piece of cover, and you will move yourself up into sort of the perfect ambush move. And you'll hear the ching ching, -ching and the loud sounds as uh, a bell true comes. You know. Walking down the path. Oh, I hope there are no bandits here. Blah, blah, you know. Uh, and uh, you will see when you get back there that there are four figures. Uh, they have this kind of weirdly stylized uh, leather armor. Um, and they have, have uh, uh, bows uh, and uh, uh, blades. And they're tall. They've got these weird angular faces. Um, they look like elves, but uh, you will recognize them that they are, in fact, Eld. E-L-D. Uh, they are elves that are not from this world. They're uh, uh, these elves that have come here, and uh, their culture is particularly cruel 
and unpleasant um, and nasty. Um, uh, and uh, they are are not to be trifled with. They're rude. Um, it, yes, they're 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 pretty awful. Um, and as you kind of realize that, you'll hear the as this uh, slide of stone and sand gives, and you'll see uh, that uh, 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 Kreva has slid out from behind cover. Uh, and uh, two of the Eld are uh, watching uh, uh, Beltru, but the other two kind of turn and look and kind of uh, go to, to draw a bow because uh, he's much closer than they expected him to be. Uh, so let's have everybody roll initiative next time because it's <laughs> it's about 10 15 <laughs> so that's where we're going to start out the session next time this seems like a great place to to take the break and we'll we'll start out. is that okay with everybody yeah yep. okay. that's a good way to do it um thank you guys very much we'll do roses and thorns at the end of next session and uh at the start of the session if there are any rules questions or anything you want answered uh we can stop and uh talk about that I have a couple of pictures of Eld. I'll make sure I bring those and post those up. They're very strange, uh, uh, awful uh, uh, cultural people here in this uh, uh, particular adventure. Uh, is that cool with everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Eugene, uh, uh, Philip, uh, uh, great to have a chance to, to play with you guys tonight. I'm looking forward to, to next session. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to stop the broadcast.